Hey, what's up? I'm Steve, United States Marine entrepreneur and instructor of the project. I want to welcome you to another episode of the MDK Wives Show. This is a show where we interview the wives of previous graduates to the project so we can get their perspective from the other side of the lines. And if you didn't know, the project is a 75-hour physical, mental, and emotional experience for men that want to become better husbands, even better fathers, entrepreneurs, and leaders. So today here on the MDKY show, I want to invite a very special guest, Liz Swift. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. And are you ready to roll? Are you ready to do this? Yes, let's do it. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. So let's just jump right in. James graduated class 004. We call his class the Corona class because actually while he was in the class, he didn't even know it, but the world had completely shut down in the middle of his class. And he had no idea about it because they had no phones or computer or anything. So we call them the Corona class has now been a little over a year. So it's going to be kind of cool to get your perspective about how things were before the project, how things were right after the project, and then how they are now a year later, especially you guys are in the fitness industry, correct? Like you run the uh, Fit Body Bootcamp together. So forget about the Corona having a a rough impact on businesses across the country, especially no worse than, than the fitness industry. So that's going to be interesting to hear how you guys dealt with that and did all that. So let's do Let's jump right into it. So when, before he joined the project March of last year, how did he approach you about it? How did he, what did, what did you know about it? What did he tell you about it? What were your thoughts, reactions? Like how did that all play out when he first told you about, he was thinking about the project? He was, kind of hesitant um i guess it was it had to do with financial our financial standpoint at that time but um when he presented to me and i seen what you guys posted I'm like holy shit that is amazing i think you should do it um i was all for it but i was a little bit concerned about the physical yeah, the physical aspect of it, like that, that stuff is pretty intense, but I knew- You're not calling him soft, are you? You're not calling him no, soft, No, 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 right, I mean, I knew how sure. to handle sure. it, handle it, but it was just, it was crazy. But I think at that time I encouraged him because I just got done with my personal, um, personal sessions with my life coach and I encouraged him to do it. Anything for, anything to just level up personally. But I thought it would be a great experience for him. Oh, that's awesome. So you were already on your own kind of personal development journey before he even actually came to the project? Yes, yes. That's so cool. I think that's what a lot of people are missing, right? One person in a relationship will start developing themselves and the other person doesn't. And then all of a sudden they're speaking different languages. So that's that's really, you took him along for the ride with you. Like you were starting to do it because let's say you started developing yourself. And he's mm -hmm. not, he's just sitting on the couch watching Netflix and eating ice cream, right? <laughs> that's not going to cut it. So that's perfect that you had almost encouraged him to do it because you want to see him go along for the ride yes. with you at the same time. You're both yes. developing. That, that's Absolutely. pretty cool. It, it, you, you see it that way. So how, how soon into, how long ago did you open up the gym? We opened up back in October, 2018. Oh, that's a... By the time he joined the project now a year ago, that was a pretty, pretty new gym, pretty new business, right? Year and a half, maybe yes. a year and a half into it. Yes. Yes. So the fitness industry is a hard enough industry to start off, even in great times, right? That's a hard business to get into the profits and get things rolling. And you're doing everything yourselves. You're working hard. How, how, how did you get over the financial part of, you know, that we're a brand new business. We're in the fitness industry, you know, pretty tough in the beginning there. It takes <laughs> a few years sometimes to get profit. How did you get over the financial hurdle of, of making the project happen? Well, I think, well, both James and I are on the same page as this, as, as far as mental, mental health, physical health is so important. I don't think you could put a price tag on that, but we, we just made it work. You know, there's, um, I don't think you, you could spend enough on yourself. You are like the best investment that you can make. That is awesome. That's awesome. That And again, that goes back to because you had already been working on it. And so it's easy for you, you to say that you you had no, you almost couldn't even tell him, no, you can't go spend this money on yourself because you're doing it. You already were doing it. right. That's awesome. And, and 
uh, you were still in the beginning stages of the business. So you just figured it out, just made it happen. Like you're willing to do whatever yes. to work on yourselves, develop yourselves. Absolutely. Okay. That, that's awesome. So what were some of the, other than financially, once he's all right, he's signed up, you guys agreed to it. You, you're going to make it happen. You're going to figure out how to, how to pay for it and all this other stuff. What were some of the other concerns and, you know, it's some of those videos are pretty scary. I'm in some of those videos. I scare myself watching that shit sometimes. So what were some of the concerns or worries you had? Like once it was, a, it was real that, all right, he's going to be going out to this, this program. What were some of the things that started? Um, mainly I'm like, you're not going to come back and be a big dick. Are you? <laughs> that, is I, awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. But I, I said, I just don't want you to completely change who you are. I just, I mean, I love you for who you are, but just don't come back a big dick. That's all I ask. <laughs> is that literally what you told him? Yes. <laughs> that, is, that is great. He failed. I actually just interviewed him. He came back here to Southern California. I know you guys were in Northern California. He just came out as a junior instructor with class 008. And I interviewed him in the studio about his experience. He, he never, he failed to mention that part to me. That was pretty interesting. This is why we said, we get the real deal. We get the truth about how things work. Like that is awesome. I haven't heard that one yet before. Like, some good stuff. So you thought it was going to change him. How did you think that like when you asked him that, like I, but you were probably, you were a little serious with that. You don't want him to come back, what, like, a co like overconfident, like cocky, like, is that what you were saying? Or how, how did you mean? Yes, yes, in that aspect, you know, um, he's been, you know, prior to the project, of course, he had to read all these books. And um, and one of them that I found interesting of the history of um, men, you know, like, They've lost of the lot. They lost the art of like going out for you know hunting for for food for the family and all of that good stuff. And you know, here I'm in my head and thinking, oh God, he's gonna come back. I am man, <laughs> but he didn't. It's more of he takes charge of everything now. Um, he's more firm, um, especially with our kids. You know, he's not. I don't know if I could say this, but pussyfooting around stuff. He's like, no, this is how it is. And I just love so far it. You, so far, you called him soft. You told him not to come back <laughs> a dick. And you said he's pussyfooting around. Wait till he sees this. Wait till he sees this. <laughs> you know, he told me to speak from the heart. So I'm speaking from the heart. That's oh, this is things. perfect. This is exactly what I want to hear. This is all the good stuff. Nice, nice. So you thought he's going to come out like this macho, like going to this thing, come back growling and snarling. Like that's what you figured he's going to come back like that, that the type of masculinity that's like frowned upon out there, you know, like, yeah, you were thinking. yeah, yeah. Like Perfect. I am man, I'm going to drop the weights. And have, like, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah, but no, no. Which there's a time for that type of, we call it a, a civilized savage or a, a savage servant is what we call it. Like having that balance in between the two, there's a time to be the savage, but always need to remain civilized and taking care of your family and, and your, yes. your spouse. So yes. Good. That's, that's awesome. So what areas do you feel like before he went like in the back of your head, you're like, all right, this is going to be perfect for you because you need this, this, and this. And maybe you didn't even tell him that, or maybe you're just thinking, you know, the four pillars of the project are the family, fitness, finances, and faith, faith, not necessarily being religious faith, but faith in yourself, self-confidence. So what kind of areas those in addition to like leadership, communication, decision-making, things like that are also what the project is about. So what areas did you feel like before he went that you know, and you're like, all right, this is the shit you need to work on. This is, you know, you're going to get the answers to this. What were some of those areas that you felt it's, you needed to work on? It's the communication. It's being, um, being present in the moment and then the work family life balance also along with marriage in work, family, all of those things that he has to balance, which he had a hard time doing. Um, I think communication is the biggest thing. Um, he wouldn't open up to me um, when there was issues, when we would get into arguments, it's always, okay, no, you're right. And sometimes I don't wanna hear that. Sometimes I need someone to be, to put me in my place and tell me how you feel. 
Mm -hmm. um, but communication has been a lot better. He's opened up a, about a lot of things, his feelings, and um, I could finally know what he's feeling and what he's thinking. So communication is a big thing. And, the, and of course, the balancing. He's more present when he's with us, you know, with the family, or when it's just he and I, or when he's spending one-on-one -on -one time with our two kids. So it's, that has just been amazing to see the, the switch. What was it like before? Can you give some examples or just uh, situations about how it was before you, you're, it sounds like you're pretty, feel pretty strong about that. So <laughs> how was it, how was it before, like the maybe lack of communication or weak communication? Like, what, what was that like before? He wouldn't really, um, he would, <sighs> he didn't really want to burden me with his, with his stress or what he's thinking or what he is feeling at that time. It's always like, okay, um, I'm going to hold this in to make you feel better. But I personally, when you do that, it just eats you up inside as a person, regardless of what gender you are, you know? So that's yeah. one of the things. And he's told, he's, mentioned stuff to me that um he's opened up to me about things that he's never told anybody else and I to me that's it's amazing because now I know you I fully know who you are I can understand who you are and why you're like this and why um why you trigger why you get triggered on certain things I get it now you know so there's a better understanding for the both of us between us Wow, that's awesome. That's some, some, some deep stuff. So basically he was like suffering in silence pretty much all the time, yes. not wanting to put the stress on to you. So he would just keep it all himself. And all that's going to do is that shit's just one day, right? Probably at the wrong time to the wrong. Probably you're talking about something else with him and he's going to snap at you or explode at you for what he held in two weeks ago. That's been just bubbling up, bubbling up. And then you're like, what the hell, what the hell you, what the, what is the problem? Right. Is that brat? Absolutely. Right. Okay, awesome. And then, so once he graduated, what was it like when he was gone? Were you, how were you, what were you thinking? What were you feeling like the, the four days when he was gone? I was actually, it, it felt nice at first because it gives the opportunity for both of us to miss one another. And I think that's been the longest that we've never communicated with one another ever since we started dating. Um, but um, I missed him. I was worried and I'm going to be honest. I stalked everyone's <laughs> Instagram just to see if he made it. And when he finally texted me on the last morning or day, he's like, I'm alive. I made it. I was so proud of him, but I was a little bit worried. <laughs> so, you, so from your side, you guys are watching Instagram. Once in a while, we'll put like little stories or little hints or clues about what's going on. We don't give too much information out, but right. so you are you are making use of those. I never, I never know if anyone actually watches that stuff or keeps up to date with it, but I guess you were just refreshing and oh, making yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. that he was okay. Yeah. Did you catch him in any videos there or pictures there or anything like while he was there? Yes, yes. I, I video, rec actually screen recorded some of them. And I sent them to his dad because his dad is, um, he used to be in the Navy. He's a retired Navy officer. I'm like, look, dad, <laughs> look what your what son's kind of, going What kind of stuff through. did you see him doing? What kind of stuff did you see him doing while he was there? Uh, mil the military crawl on the gravel. Um, the sitting in the beach, <laughs> just mm -hmm. taking on the tides. And I think, I think I got a, um, a glimpse of him digging his own grave, which I was like, Holy shit, that's crazy. <laughs> so you saw all the good stuff, all the fun stuff. You saw him in at the best. Those are like some of the toughest moments there, but some of the best moments there. That's awesome that, that you yeah. experienced it a little bit side by side. I don't know if anyone catches on to those or if you were watching, but it looks like you guys are stalking the shit out of those pages. So we'll keep, we'll keep, putting, <laughs> those little, keep putting those little bits out there for you. That's good stuff. So, all right. So he makes it. He, he texts you that Friday, probably Friday evening or at, late afternoon is once they finally finished and the graduation dinner ceremony was at night so he he texts you he finishes the graduation dinner he comes home the next day or whatever it is what were some of the immediate like 
I'm talking the minute he's back that you noticed a difference or changes or transformation that like didn't take time. Like right away, what were some of the immediate changes? Other than him being tired, I noticed that he looked lighter. Like he looked lighter. He also looked um, very, gosh, what's the word? He was ready to take on the world. And um, he just, well, he was hungry too. So, <laughs> of course. but he, he looked a lot lighter, like, like relieved. That's you the mean lighter thing. as in like a load off his shoulders. You don't mean yes. lighter as in, lighter as in we, he was starving and needed to eat. <laughs> well, that's you. No, but he looked relieved. Like, a, yeah, a load was taken off of his shoulder. And re- we, we, rejuvenated you know re-energized there you go that's the word that's awesome what, what do you think was the weight that was on his shoulders that he he needed to take off if you have any thought on it or what do you think that was I want to say I want to say he faced some demons internal demons with himself like he I don't he hasn't really shared much with I should I should really ask him but if it looked like he dealt with some inner demons within himself and he looked more confident in himself actually as well. So, I mean, some, some, yeah, sometimes it doesn't have to be anything so serious or deep and it might be, and I'm sure you guys will talk about that, but in those things that you saw him doing, like the, you know, crawling through the military, crawl through the weeds and the ocean with you know freezing cold water splashing in your face and stuff digging his own grave. Like, a man learns a lot about himself, even discovers new things about himself. First, not only does he find weaknesses about what's been holding him back, what's been his lid that's been holding him back, like he's going to discover some strengths about himself that he never even knew existed, that he hasn't been using, fully utilizing. So sometimes it could be that. He just discovered some new things about him and just coming back. I love what you said. He just came back and you know, the way he's ready to take on the world. Like, have you ever yeah. seen him? Have you ever seen him at that level before that? Or was that like the first time seeing him like that? That was, that was the first time. It was, it's different. It's different from when he used to go to um, headquarters for whatever training. He would come back. He's he's ready. But this this time around, it was different. The look in his eyes was just was more fierce. It was it was just different. That is, that's an awesome word. I was going to ask you what would be the word of the look in his eyes. And you just answered it right there. <laughs> so he came back some a different approach, a different, you know, pop than you've ever seen before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the way, the way he looked at all three of us, our two kids and myself, it was, it was totally different. We went to go get something to eat after we picked him up from the airport and out of nowhere, he just thanked us and for who we are. And he just told us how much he appreciates us. And it was, it was different, you know, I mean, he usually does tell us, but that moment in time, I feel like there was a light bulb that went off, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe he told me about when he, when he dug his own grave and he was in there thinking like he, he was like, Oh my God, if I get up, if I get out, I'm just, I'm going to disappoint my family. I'm going to disappoint myself. It's going to, you know, and all of the things that you go through life, he's, he thought about, but that moment when we were sitting in the restaurant waiting for our food, he just was like, thank you for everything. I love you guys. I was like, wow, holy shit. <laughs> Who person. is this man sitting here with us? Yes. <laughs> wow, that's that's freaking awesome stuff. And that right there just right there just makes all worth everything that we do and what those guys do when they come in here. That that makes and the sacrifice and the pain and the hardship makes it all worth it for them. That's freaking just awesome. So that was immediately, you kind of saw this different approach he had, this different fears. Now, a year later, 
how is that now? How, how is that same fierceness, that same confidence, that same approach that he has any different than then? Has it been the same? Has it proven? Where are you at now a year later? Where are you, what are you kind of seeing? It, you know, of course, with everybody, everybody has a little setback here and there, you know, every, everybody goes through it. And he, he did have a little setback, but he bounced right back. And I think he bounced back more better than ever. Um, he has taken the time to really think about things, define things, what they mean to him. And he, his approach with everything is he thinks about how it's going to play out if he does this, what's, you know, he always has a backup mm -hmm. plan. Um, he is more open to letting people in. He's more authentic than before. He's not worried so much about what people think of him. He, mm -hmm. like, this is me, take, you know, this is who I am, take it or leave it. And honestly, I love it. <laughs> I that's, that's a freedom that's like a personal freedom right just to uh, be yourself and no longer work with the hell people not giving a shit what other people think about you that's yeah it it's every I say like every time he does something that something to that nature where he brings out his authenticity it surprises the shit out of me I'm like holy shit there you are there there it is <laughs> And I love wow, it. That's, that's freaking cool. That that's cool. So and some of the I'm guessing some of the setbacks he probably had in the last year is he's fairly new in the fitness industry. I think we're starting the project. You said he's only your gym was only open for about a year and a half. And at the time you weren't working in the gym at all. And so that's a tough year to go through uh, with with having a fitness industry during all the lockdowns. Gyms are not one of the you know ideal businesses to have during that all this crazy stupid stuff going on yeah where where was the business the the, the gym and, and your business knock on through the project and it had to deal with all this quarantines and shutdowns and all that stuff do you think there would have been a different outcome with the business or where would you see things now in the business if he had never gone through the project and kind of learned how to deal with these things I don't think we would be in business quite honestly I think you um I think we would have given up um but what do you think made that not happen his integrity with himself and with me you know um he's like I can't I can't fail I can't fail you I can't fail myself and he holds a lot of integrity with himself so if it wasn't for that I don't think we would be where we're at you know the he's also like I don't I don't give a shit what you you know what the governor says. We're going to stay open. We're going to do it. We're going to push through it. So I don't think if he didn't have the type of mentors that he has, I don't think we would still be in business. That's that's some strong stuff. Right? Some that's I mean these are just bombs. These are just bombs dropping. This is good stuff. So and I know now you're working in the gym with him. How do you think, let's say he didn't go through the project. Do you think you ever would have been able to work in the business with him, even just part-time? Do you think that was a quick, no, I didn't even finish the question. You already started nodding your head. <laughs> you knew what was coming. You just like, hell no, hell no. Yeah. Why, 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 wouldn't, why wouldn't that have worked before the project? Um, The way he is, it's, I want it this way. I want it done a certain way. He doesn't like asking for help. and. I think a lot of, also a lot of it has to do with me working also full-time in my full-time position, my full-time job, mm -hmm. but now it's, he, he thought about what the definition of a partner is. And um, I don't think he would have ever thought about that prior to the project. Um, he's, really good about asking for help now and the partnership between us is a real partnership mm. so he, and also the communication yeah communication is big 
but yeah, you wouldn't have even been able to deal with that old version and working together in the same building, building a business together. You just wouldn't have been able to even deal with that before the project. Right. And how, right. how is yeah. it now? You know, you, how long have you now been actually in working in the business with him? He just actually really let me in um, the beginning of this year, to be honest with you. Okay, so a few months. Yeah. How's it's it been, going in, those, in that time? How's it been working together now in there? The, it's been months? really good. It's been really good. And now it's like, okay, you handle that. I don't have to worry about that. You handle that. Okay. <laughs> so it's that's, been that's really awesome. good. Good stuff. Good stuff. So now that now, how do you, so that was before the project we talked about during it, we talked about it immediately when he came home now a year down the line, how do you see now the of your relationship, your business, your family, you know, another year from now, three, five, 10 years from now, knowing what you know, now what he's picked up from the project connections and the brotherhood that he's creating the project. How do you see the future of your family, your business and your relationship with him, oh. you know, post post project? Oh, everything, everything's going to be successful. We're going to, you know, of course, marriage is work and we're going to continue to work on ourselves with each other. We're going to make sure that we're not growing apart, but we are growing together individually and together. You know, we're going, we've, we try our best to influence our kids, teach them, you know, what we weren't, whatever we haven't learned from our parents, what we've currently learned. And, you know, I think it's going to, we're going to be amazing. We're going to be, we're going to have a strong bond. I feel like our bond is going to continue to be strong. Um, as far as the business, I've, our goal is to dominate the Sacramento area if possible. Um, and we're going to work hard to do that. It's going to be a lot of work, but I see us doing it. I see us conquering it, building an empire. <laughs> conquering and domination and empire. These are the kind of words we want to hear after the project. This is what it's all about. Coming from an MDK wife, this is this is freaking awesome. This is some good stuff. So I think we we got tons out of this. I got tons out of this. And I want to thank you for coming to, to join me here on the MDK Wives show. Is there anything that you would say to a... A gentleman's wife, so maybe, maybe a, someone, a couple that's thinking about, you know, the, the man might be thinking about joining the project. Anything you would just advise you for that couple? Maybe they're struggling. Maybe they are starting to, as you said, they start, you know, going, separating in their own different ways rather than getting more cohesive. And they're considering the project. Seems like it's an expensive thing. What's something you would tell people in that position, kind of where you were, you know, a year ago? What's, what's some advice you'd have for them? Don't think about it. Just do it. You are the most, um, your, vet, your investment in yourself is priceless. Just do it. There's no, there's no amounts of money for investing in yourself. Just do it. Yeah, people invest in their, they'll, buy, they'll build a new bathroom for $20,000, $30,000 in their house, right? Uh, right. I have neighbors who are out of shape, but they'll sit and water alone for two, three hours a day time or money to go get in shape or whatever it is so you are your most important client is pretty much what, what you're saying absolutely you your yes that, that is awesome stuff to end this on so again i want to thank you for joining me here on the mdk live show liz appreciate you taking the day if you or james need anything you are both part of the project family you now have an army supporting you around you if you ever need anything just please reach out we will do anything we can to help you out so thanks again for coming on the show Thank you. Awesome. Let me know if you need anything else. Thanks. This has been another episode of the MDK Show. If you got any, anything out of this or you know someone that needs to hear some of the things we just talked about, whether it's in their relationships, whether it's uh, becoming a better husband, a better father, a better leader, a better entrepreneur for men, please like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel down below. And if you need anything, let me know. You are freaking awesome. Thanks again, Liz. I will talk to you Thank soon. Thank you. No excuses.